All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day and I don't have like a regular scheduled planned uh, vlog. I don't have any of the segments. We're not doing viewer mail or retro vaping or beer or any or any of the normal uh, vlog things like that. What this video is going to be is basically just my top favorite stuff from this year. I'm not doing like uh, top five, like the number one RDA or the number one box mod. I'm not doing anything like that. I will have it split up into categories, but it's not necessarily gonna be a top five of every category. This is just vape stuff that I really enjoyed using this year. This is vape stuff that after I was done evaluating it for the purpose of doing a YouTube video, this is stuff that I just wanted to use and kept using because I liked it so much, as well as some standout stuff that might not have been in my regular rotation on a regular basis, but still some pretty stellar stuff. There was a lot of good vape gear this year. This year we went kind of squonker crazy. So of course I'm gonna have a few squonkers in there as well. Of the ones that I use, there are, I mean, I mean, how many squonker, how many squonkers are on the market right now? Dozens, dozens of squonkers. Out of the ones that I used, I have some favorites here. I have some favorite boxes mods. I've got some favorite drippers. We're going to talk about some of my favorite liquids. I've got tanks. I've got sub ohm tanks. And obviously I don't have everything set up right now. Just, just ready to vape. I didn't set up 30 new setups just to do this video, but I've got a few of them here to vape. So we're just going to start. You just want to start. Let's just start. And I'm not going to do any little like uh, bumpers or anything. Although I am going to put uh, timestamps for everything. If you want to jump to a certain segment, if you just want to see Just Juice. I'll have a timestamp for that down in the description as well as I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show everybody all the timestamps right here. Also just so you can get an idea of where this vlog is going and where it's going to end up. And also if my voice sounds a little bit weird it's because I'm still just barely barely getting over this head cold. There might be a couple little <sniffs> kind of things happening here and there, but otherwise I feel great except for this area right here, except for my nasal area. It's a bad scene, man. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is uh, drippers, RDAs. I'm a big fan of drippers. I'm a big fan of RDAs. And there was a bunch this year that I really enjoyed using. Obviously no one's going to be surprised by this. And again, this isn't in any order. This doesn't mean this is the best one. This doesn't mean that this is the fifth least best one. There's no rankings here. This is just my favorite stuff. Obviously, Obviously, I have to mention the Recoil Rebel. It's it's my RDA. It's an RDA that me and my you know and my best bro Dwayne we designed it and manufactured it and sold it. I put uh, you know we put our hearts and blood and well not actually blood but we put a lot of work into this RDA and we love the way it came out. It's my daily banger. I use my Rebel every single day. Since I got the first prototype of the Rebel, I have not stopped vaping the Rebel. I think it's a stellar RDA, but again, just as a disclaimer, yeah, this is my RDA. This is something that I benefit from directly. And with that said, I think we designed a pretty banging RDA. And not to give away any spoilers, but I got it sitting here on top of the Drip Tech DS loaded up with Turkish Maze, which is gonna be in the juice segment. I'm gonna be referencing, I don't know, some of the other segments, I guess, as we go along here. That's something I didn't really uh, think about very much. But yeah, I got my Rebel sitting on top of the Drip Tech DS, loaded up with Turkish Maze. This is a very simple Ruby build in here. It's a 7-wrap, 24-gauge uh, Anarchist Nichrome build. I wrapped it around a 3mm, and it came out to around a 0.19, and on a Mac or on a dual parallel box, like this Drip Tech DS, or like my Titans, or like any parallel box, it's just a really nice, flavorful vape. This is the AFC cap on there, DH HD tip on top. Yeah, I just, uh, I just love it. I just love my own atomizer. Next up after that, not a whole lot of surprises here. Dead Rabbit. I love the Dead Rabbit. I think Heathen did an unbelievable job with this atomizer. It's one of my favorite atomizers to build, to wick, to bleh my juice, to vape. The airflow is nice and smooth and the flavor is stellar. I think Heathen knocked it out of the park with the Dead Rabbit RDA. 
so good. Such a good vape. This was one thing that when I was putting together this video, I really wanted to set up to build and wick and juice up just so I could vape it again because I think it's so good. Actually, let's go to a uh, let's go to a clip. I think we have a clip. I talk about it in the vlog constantly. I think it's a great atomizer. It's got a really interesting deck. It's basically like a postless design, but they're kind of these little T shapes, right? Yeah. So you can put your you, you kind of still have to pre-cut your leads a little yes, bit, right? Yes, yes, and that's a big misunderstanding. Like, I just wanted to make it easier, like take the guesswork out of right. pre-cutting your coil. So just give it a quick snip, pop it in, if there's anything left over, snip it from the bottom. Yeah, you can blow your juice right through the center yes, of this yes. like a boss. Yep. You don't have to move it, you don't have to pop your top, you don't have to do anything. You just go bleh, and it's right, your coils are right there. So the airflow, your coils are a little bit higher up yes. because of the deck, right. and your airflow is set very high up, but it's angled down. Go down under so your this coils. airflow, even though it's so high, it'll get under your coils. Yes. Under your coils, it'll get everywhere you need it to get. The smooth airflow, easy to build deck, you can blow your juice right through the top, it's goon compatible. I and, can't. And the airflow's up high, so it's going to be less prone to leaking. So oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. For a ton of juice. I mean, of yeah. course, if you take your top cap off, I mean, the barrel off, and you have yeah. it filled, it will leak. You I pop mean, this off, juice is going everywhere. Right. But, but just like if you have a tank filled, you don't want to take it apart. Right, exactly. It's yeah. the same thing. It's yeah. the same thing. And really, if you're blowing your juice through the top, you don't ever need to pull this off. No, you don't. You don't need ever to. have to pop yeah, it off. Exactly. So it all stays in there. I like the dead rabbit a lot. I think it's a stellar RDA. This RDA is going to be one of those that goes into like my never gets retired. So yeah, Dead Rabbit, definitely one of my favorite things of the year. Next up after that, we have the Reload RDA. Love the Reload RDA. This is an RDA that I have been using basically nonstop since I got it. I used the stainless steel one before I got the rainbowy one, and I've been using the rainbowy one a lot. I think it's just a really great RDA. I love that it has Kennedy style airflow, but I still have the ability to really heavily bleh my juice over it, and I never get any leaking out of the airflow. The Reload RDA is a little bit more difficult to acquire, and it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other things we're talking about in this video. But I love it. I think it's well worth it. I mean, this is the ultimate Aliens game right now. Right now, what we're doing is, if the Aliens or the FDA came and took everything I had, this is the stuff that I would probably buy first. And one of those things is the Reload RDA. Great flavor, great deck. Great, it's just a great RDA. I love the big swooshy airflow. I really like the deck. I think it's super easy to build on. It is super easy to wick. And best of all, I really do have the ability to blend my juice through this and have Kennedy style airflow without it leaking out the sides. In fact, I think we have a clip of this as well. It's a fantastic RDA. I'm talking about the Reload RDA from Reload Vapor. I have had an amazing time with this. Like over the last three to four weeks, this has been, this has kind of been an unbelievable atomizer. Got a really interesting, unique deck there. It's got Kennedy style airflow. So it goes in and up and then it's got kind of this split deck over here. So that's the negative. That's the positive. Big, deep juice well in there as well. Nice, big, deep juice well. These are just some MTurk Aliens that I installed in here. Like I said, super easy to install. There's a few RDAs out there that I consider to be like my favorite, like that, that sort of upper echelon of RDAs and not a lot gets up there. Some things come really close, man, but they don't make it into that like, I will use this RDA forever type of situation. There's only a few in there. And I'm kind of happy to report that the Reload RDA is well on its way to getting into that category. Since I got this, I have not set it down. It's got Kennedy Airflow, so it's going to have fairly decent flavor. It's a wonderful, wonderful vape experience. And best of all, best of all. you can bleh your juice right through the center of this like a champion. I dig it. It's one of my favorites of 2017, man. 
honorable mention for an RDA is going to be like the Goon 1.5. Look, I really like the Goon 1.5, but it wasn't a huge departure from the Goon. It was kind of like, well, it was kind of like the Goon 1.5. It was just a little bit different than the Goon, had a slightly different deck, had slightly different airflow. I really loved the Goon a lot, and the Goon 1.5 was just a little bit of an upgrade from the Goon. So yeah, of course I'm going to like it, and I don't have it set up or anything right now, but it was, it was awesome. It was a great RDA. And another quick honorable mention, even though I'm very sure it came out in 2016, I didn't review it until January 2017, but the Cosmonaut RDA, Cosmonaut RDA, it's one of my favorites. I, I love it. I loved using it this year. I don't have it set up right now, but I think we might have a clip. What we're going to be talking about today is this guy right here. I have been using this literally nonstop since the second it arrived at my house. This is the Cosmonaut RDA from District 5. Taking a look at that deck, you can see it's a postless deck. That's the positive protected by the peak insulator, and the negative is milled right into the deck. Flathead screws on the side, you basically just set your coils in there, screw it down on both sides, and that's it. You're good to go. It's a really super easy deck to build on. The fit and finish on this atomizer, top notch. And mostly what I love most of all about this RDA, besides the stellar flavor I get and besides the nice smooth swooshy airflow, is you can bleh your juice like a boss. And even though there's only one O-ring on the bottom of the deck like you saw, I've never, never had this leak at all all on me at all. I dig it. I dig it so much. I dig it from top to bottom. I like the deck. I like that it's easy to build. I like that it's easy to wick. I like the airflow. Full open, the airflow is almost perfect almost perfect. And even though it really came out really late this year, that damn Mike Vapes iconic RDA, I, I am having a wonderful time with it. I'm not in love with the deck. I think I've made that pretty clear that I'm not really in love with this deck, but I am really in love with the vape quality that I get from this RDA. Smooth, swooshy airflow, wonderful flavor, and it doesn't get spitty at all, which is a huge bonus. Plus, yeah, I can blend my juice right through the middle. Okay, so moving on from RDAs, let's talk real quick about regulated mods. There was a lot of regulated mods this year, and I had a couple of ones that I really, really liked, including the Revenant, which never got a review. I don't believe this ever got a review, but I use the Revenant as a daily banger regulated, dual 18650 regulated mod, more, I think, than any other mod I've used this year. It has always been on my desk. If it hasn't been on my desk, it's been in the waiting area, like, let's Let's use that soon. It's just sitting over here. Let's use that soon. The Revenant kind of became my go-to. If I got a new atomizer, I'm going to put it on the Revenant. If I got a new tank, I'm going to put it on the Revenant because I know it's got a good chip and I know that I'm going to get a, you know, a very powerful, consistent vape with it. Plus, they just look so cool. I'm especially attached, sentimentally attached to this Revenant because I traded for it in Sweden. I actually traded one of the original Recoil Rebel prototypes for this mod right here. And I think it was one of the best decisions I ever made because I love the Revenant. The Revenant is something that I don't think is ever going to go away. I had an original Revenant that was the blue and kind of red swirly guy that I dropped and broke. Now it didn't break like the basilisk broke. The door hinge actually bent and broke and I couldn't close it anymore. And that really bummed me out because I love the Revenant. just a good it's just a good mod it's just a good mod it fits good in my hand there's no sharp edges or anything everything's rounded and most every RDA or RTA that I have in my arsenal of collection here fits on here looks cool on here and works well on here just love me some revenant action you hear my really stuffed up nose it's like I, it's, I'm talking all nasally because my nose is all stuffed up. So I apologize that you have to listen to that. So obviously this is just mods. This isn't, uh, you know, just regulated mods. But one mod I really loved this year was this Evoke from Alter Ego Creations. I didn't see anybody else talking about this mod. I'm not sure anybody else got this mod. This was like a, uh, this was a sleeper, man. This did not get a lot of 
mainstream attention here in the vape community, but it is a banging dual parallel unregulated 18650 box mod. It really reminds me of that old Noisy Cricket uh, or the Noisy Cricket 2-25 that I really loved last year. It reminds me of a nice parallel version of that. It's such a small little compact thing that fits in your hand. Uh, I don't have this set up right now with any batteries or anything, but I, I think I do have a clip. You know, top to bottom, this mod just feels really nice in the hand. It's it's almost like the perfect, perfect size for my Nick-sized hands. And even though it is made out of pure Ultim, which I generally dislike, this button is just a joy to use. It looks cool on here, it's got a quick little soft throw, and it just... Ah, it's smooth and I like it. Come on, look how cool that looks. Seriously, look how cool that looks. I like using it, I like pressing the button, I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels, I like the way it hits. It's just a really good all around banger mod for me, for the way that I like to vape. This is right, right up my alley. Silver contacts make it really nice and conductive. It hits nice and hard. And I think I've said this before, it just feels like a nice high quality mod. Another mod I loved, loved, loved this year, which the Dead Rabbit is sitting on top of, is the Loch Ness, the Vape Envy Loch Ness. I was devastated when I broke my original one. This was a mod that I would never stop using. I just kept using it and using it. I took it everywhere with me and then one day same as the revenant i was trying to carry too much stuff and you know you do that thing sometimes where you're where you're carrying things it was like i had a hoodie and then like an ipad and i was going downstairs and i just drop i just put my mod on top there and then you got turn too quickly or something and your mod just goes <laughs> that happened it broke same thing my battery door popped open batteries shot out and then it bent and i was never able to fix it or close it again luckily Vape Envy took care of me. I got a brand new Black Lock Ness. Love it. Love this mod. Love the form factor. I even actually really look like the look of this. It's got that clicky MyTech switch on there. It's got a nice little display right there. The menu system is not overly complicated or anything. That's one thing that really bums me out is overly complicated menu systems. I'm not a temp control guy. I don't care about custom TCRs or setting them to use with, you know, titanium wire or stainless steel wire. I either vape in wattage mode or I vape in bypass mode and thankfully this Loch Ness from Vape Envy lets me do both of those things very easily. I mean, not bypass mode. I've actually never vaped this in bypass mode. I've only vaped this in wattage mode. It adjusts in one watt increments. So if I want to go from 90 to 91 watts, I just go once and now it's at 91 watts. It's not 90.1.2.3.4.5.6.7.8.9, then 91 watts. Or you do, you know, on some mods, you have to hold the button down and it goes real fast, and then you let go and it's went past where you want it to go. I like my regulated mods to adjust in one watt increments because that's how I vape. I'm a wattage vapor. I wanna vape at 90 watts or 91 watts. I don't wanna vape at 90.3 watts. Anyway, I don't have a clip for this. This is the Loch Ness. Mod from Vape Envy. Envy Vape. E N V I I Vape. This is the Loch Ness. My tech switch right there. Clicky buttons. Nice display right there. I have no idea what chip this is running on, but I really enjoy this chip. It's just been really rad. This this right here is a fantastic setup. And what I love, I mean absolutely love about this Loch Ness mod is the form factor. This is a insanely ergonomic mod. It just feels so comfortable in the hand. There's been a few mods lately, like that Joytick Evic Primo, like the way the Hexome fits in my hand with that fat back door, and the way that this fits in my hand, it's perfect. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. It's almost like they made it specifically for my hand. Big atomizers can fit on here. This is, the Crown 3 is 22, but it can fit a 24 or 25 millimeter atomizer on here. I love holding this in my hand like this, hitting that button with my thumb, 
dude, it's so great. Because I honestly don't think this ever got its own full review, but I'll vouch for it right now. I've been talking about it all year. The Loch Ness from Vape Envy. It's vape budget hands friendly. It's under a hundred bucks. It's only around $87, which for this mod, I feel is like a screaming deal. And I know I already said this at the beginning, but I feel like I want to say it again. If the aliens or the FDA come and take everything I have, mod, uh, Loch Ness, mod, Vape Envy, one of the first things I buy, I, I like it that much. And then rounding out some of my favorite mods, this little guy right here, that single 18650 USVL 60 or 75 watt device, I really like this thing. I really like the record player texture on the back. I like that the display is completely hidden behind a door. So all you have is a clean box with just a single button on the front. This thing is great for little single coil RTAs. It is great for little single coil like flavor banger drippers. Like some other things we're talking about today, I don't have this set up. I don't have anything on top and I don't have a battery on the inside, but I believe we do have a clip. We're gonna be talking about this little box mod today. This is little single 18650 banger from USV, United Society of Vape. I have been having a really good time with it. I think it is a pretty stellar little single 18650 mod. There's not really a lot to this mod. It's a very simple box. It is rounded on the corners, like I said, so it doesn't feel pointy in any way. It's actually pretty comfortable to hold, and I like the size of it. My absolute favorite thing about this mod is how clean it looks. I hit the button three times. I'm confident that it's locked. I press the button. Yeah, uh, nothing happened and then a quick one two three I know that it's unlocked and now I can vape it And this has over time proven to be just one of my favorites. It fits well in my pocket. I don't have to worry about adjusting things. And overall, I don't think I said this enough. Aesthetically, I just, I really like the way this box looks. I feel like it's kind of a cool, clean, classy looking box. And another thing I've been vaping a lot this year, I got it back at ECC and it never got its own full review because this wasn't the final version. Sigeli was supposed to send me out the final version of this and that just kind of never happened. And I'm okay with it. This wasn't the final version, but this is the Sugel Sugeli. Sugeli, I said Sugeli. This is the Sugeli Fuchai Glow. Out of all of the mods on the market now that light up and have flashing LED color lights on them, this is far and away my favorite just because it is the most clean looking one. It's mostly black, it's transparent at the bottom. You can see LEDs on the bottom. It's not, you're not gonna see it now because it's way too bright. I'll try to take a picture of the LEDs. And then you have a simple little glow around your button and it's a Fuchai body with Fuchai circuits on the inside, whatever board they use. I really like this mod. I, I like the way it fits in my hand. And honestly, I think this mod looks really cool. When I want to use like a cool looking mod, this is the one I generally grab for. And I also really like with this mod, I and I realize this is a dumb, shallow thing to say that doesn't really have anything to do with like the style or the performance of the mod per se. But I really like that it's black with colors because then I can use something black with colors as well. And it can still be a little bit of a matchy matchy unit. I like my vapes to look cool because I have to look at them. And this topper is not going to be included in any of my favorite things because I literally just set it up yesterday, but I'm going to include this topper in the category of why the fuck didn't I set this up sooner? This is the Pharaoh Mini and I've only been using it for 24 hours and I absolutely am having an unbelievable time with this tank. And I mean that in a positive way, not absolutely unbelievable. Like absolutely unbelievable. It was so easy to build, it was so easy to wick, and the vape quality that I get from it is awesome. Not to mention, even with my stuffy nose, the flavor on this is great. I cannot imagine, I can't wait until I'm fully free and clear of all of my sinus congestion. And I can really taste the flavor of this Pharaoh Mini. It's a great tank. I'll probably be doing a review for this, you know, into the new year. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about mech mods. 
Okay, wow, I am sorry. I am editing this video and I realize that I have made a glaring omission in the mod segment of this video. Although the original one did come out in 2016, the version 2.1 Squid Industries Double Barrel came out in 2017. And honestly, out of everything I've talked about in this video so far, this might be my favorite favorite mod, regulated mod of 2017. For me, for the way that I like to vape, I like clouds bro clouds, I like warm vapor, and I like wattage mode. The Squid Industries double barrel is basically everything I want in a mod. It's a tiny, tiny little form factor, kind of like that evoke, how it reminds me of the noisy cricket. This also reminds me of the noisy cricket, except it's regulated. And I know the noisy cricket 2-25 was regulated as well, but but that mod was firmly in 2016. It wasn't even a little bleed over into 2017. But this Squid Industries has reached that point in my collection where I just always want to use it. It will never ever get put away because it never lets me down. Super solid, durable, rugged construction, wattage mode, dual 18650s, that's it. I am wishing and hoping with all of my wishes and hopes that some point in 2018, Squid Industries maybe releases a dual 2700 version of this and makes that dual 2700 version 25 millimeters around. If that happens, if that ever exists, that is going to be my favorite mod. I can already sense it happening. But yeah, I just really love this thing. I like adjusting the wattage with just this little clicky wheel right here. And I love that clicky wheel also becoming a very clicky fire button. I like being able to see my little display right on top shows me everything I need to know. Wattage, resistance, amperage, and your battery level indicator. I've got it topped right now with that Fire Luke mesh sub-ohm tank, which, yeah, we're going to talk about that uh, in just a little bit in, in, in this same video. But I had to throw a quick edit in here. Give credit where credit is due. Squid Industries double barrel version 2.1. Firmly, firmly one of my favorite things of 2017. In fact, I, I think we have a clip. Got another mod here. This is the Squid Industries double barrel version 2.1. It's like a gunmetal finish on here. They're coming in different colors, I believe, but this is like a gunmetally really soft, like anodized aluminum finish, although I don't think it's aluminum. I think this is actually stainless steel because it's so weighty. But dude, look how compact this is for a dual 18650. I have this set to 87 watts. The display is right here, so it's super easy to read. 0.22 at 87 watts. Clouds, bro. The way that you adjust this by spinning it you spin this wheel to adjust the wattage up and down, and now that I've fucked it all up, let's go back up to 80 watts. This is a very minimal, minimal mod. It does power wattage mode. It will show you your resistance, it will show you your wattage, and it will show you your voltage, and it will show you a battery indicator. It has one button that also serves as the fire button, which it is nice clicky and this acts as a wheel to turn to adjust your wattage that's just so fucking cool man really super compact mod that i have really been enjoying i've been having a fan fucking tastic time squid industries double barrel version 2.1 Okay, so now, now that I've corrected that glaring omission, uh, let's get back to the regularly scheduled video. There were some mech mods this year. I don't feel like 2017 was a real strong year for mech mods, but I tried a few that I actually really did enjoy a lot. An honorable mention one is going to be the V-God uh, Mac Pro that they have. It was the weird, shapey design thing. It was, it was rounded in the middle. It was like bulbousy in the middle. It was a V-God Elite mech mod. I really, really enjoyed that mech mod. I don't even have it out right now. I don't have it sitting anywhere. And I know that I didn't do a full review for it. So I don't even have a clip to show you, but it's going to be an honorable mention here in the mech mod section. Another mech that I really like this year. Yeah, the rig mod descendant, even though this, like I've said a thousand times, it looks like a roll of shit covered pennies. It's so patinaed and brown and dull right now. This is the one I cleaned with uh, ketchup earlier in the year. And I just really like it. It's a nice feel mech mod and it hits real nice and hard and best of all one of the things that I love about mech mods that have come out this year is there's nothing to adjust for the longest time in the vape world I mean I'm talking going back to like 
2013-2014, we had horrible adjustment pins inside mech mods. Like these weird little, tiny little screws where you'd unscrew it a little bit and then put your atomizer on and be like, nope, there's still battery rattle. And then you'd pull it off and you'd adjust this little pin and you'd put it back together and you'd be like, oh, okay, well, that's much better. With these newer mech mods, thankfully, there is nothing to adjust anymore. It has a brilliant switch in the bottom. I think this is one of the best design switches I have ever seen in a mech. It's a hybrid. It hits hard. I've got it topped with the iconic RDA just because this is the one RDA I have in my arsenal right now that is set up with a build for a single 18650 mech mod. And when I'm using any of these mech mods, I'm going to be using the same atomizer and the same battery so I can kind of see how hard they hit, how, the, how differently they hit. But the Descendant has always hit nice and hard, so I'm expecting some pretty great vape right now. Yes, nice and hard, Descendant, nice and hard. And another mech that really surprised me this year was that Geek Vape Tsunami mech. It comes as a kit, so not so much like the atomizer that comes with it, but the mech itself was awesome. This is the Tsunami mech kit. So you get a kit that comes with a mech mod okay. and an RDA. But uh, let's It's got a little weight to it. It feels good, I right? Like that. Yeah, it feels a little, a little weight weighty. To it. Let's try I'll show it. you some other cool stuff you might be into. It's not hot. It's not hot at all. No. What did you think of the button? Not bad. I didn't really notice it. Mm. So. These are things you have to evaluate, dude. As a YouTuber, you're always evaluating. Well, let me evaluate. Take a pull. Let, let me... me know what you think about the button, Dwayne. Let's disassemble this button. And no, we'll, uh, just see we'll how come it back feels. in a couple minutes. How does it here? feel when you press it? It feels nice. It feels smooth. good. Yeah, it's smooth. Yeah, it's like a really hard spring, though, in there. It's not like the Tugboat V2. Right, like it's not a five-pound spring. Holy cow, like hold it with two hands and right. then and push press it. it against your desk. <laughs> it has a long throw, and it feels nice. Uh, it feels squishy, but there's some good resistance there. Yeah. When I first oh, got really? it... It was, mm -hmm. it feels a little zippy. Mm -hmm. Like there's machine lines in there yeah. and the button is going, zip, zip, yeah. zip, zip. Mm -hmm. but over the course of a few days, that almost completely went away. And yeah, that's just an anodized yeah. tube and slides right on there. O ring. Oh, right. Smart. So, right? Clever How smart guys. is that? They put an O ring on the inner tube so that it smooth. Look how smooth. Oh. And it kind of holds it in place. Yeah. And then there's teeth at the top. Yep. that put it into place so you can hold the tube and unscrew your atomizer well not in yeah. this, and unscrew your atomizer and the tube won't spin oh. it's on there with like teeth once again, same Samsung 25R on the inside, same iconic RDA on top. I remember this being a good mech, so don't let me down, Tsunami. And I also don't know why they put the Star of David on the button. That's just a that's just an odd choice to put on the button there, but it's whatever. You don't have to look at it if you don't want to. Yeah, dude. Nice. Hitting nice and hard. A lot like the Descendant, this is a very straightforward mech. There is nothing to adjust. It is a hybrid top cap on top, so you have to have an atomizer with a nice, long, protruding, static, sturdy 510 pin. I can't stress that enough with every mech mod. Remember that you, the user, are the safety. There's no safety wiring, safety switches or fuses or boards or anything in here to help protect you. You have to protect yourself. I also just really liked that the way that the tsunami was put together, it had those teeth at the top, so your sleeve went on and stayed secure on there. There was a little clear O-ring underneath, so your sleeve stayed on there, and you could twist the mech and twist your atomizer without worrying about your sleeve spinning around on there. I thought it was really cool, and it did come with a bunch of other sleeves, and I also really liked that they included on the inside a plastic tube for extra safety. I am going to be putting links to everything I talk about down in the description, but remember, Remember, some of these are a lot more expensive than others, so when you're perusing the links, be sure to use your vape budget hands. Another mech that I got this year that I used a lot and really loved is that TVL five ring mech mod. I haven't used a lot of TVL mechs. I know that TVL mechs are some of the most popular mechs in the world, at least within, you know, the vape world. I, I don't know how popular TVL mechs are in, say, 
Ireland or Russia. But I know that TVL, the TVL has a huge team, a huge following here in the States, and for good reason. Their mechs are insanely high quality. They're also very expensive, but they're insanely high quality. The fit and finish on them is just beautiful. Once again, iconic RDA on top, Samsung 25R on the inside. Boom, hitting nice and hard. And again, this was one of those mechs where there's really nothing to adjust. You put your atomizer on, you put your battery in, and everything is adjusted with this little button at the bottom. You just screw it until it's tight, and then it's good. You're all adjusted, and it feels like a solid mech. And then, of course, lastly, I'm not gonna talk about mechs without mentioning the Vapeworks Dot MMK mech mods. This has probably been one of my favorite mech mods of the year. And again, in the interest of being honest and transparent, we sell these mech mods on Recoil rda.com we do them in insanely short runs it's usually only like 10 at a time and they are very expensive these are made by hand in indonesia this isn't like a mass-produced chinese market they do short runs of them so we get even shorter runs of them but i think it's a great mech and it is yeah it's really expensive Again, same thing, hybrid top cap, virtually, I mean, absolutely nothing to adjust. It's got that magnetic switch in there. And the reason that I like this mech mod so much is in combination with a dock tip, it basically makes every RDA look cool. The iconic RDA on this looks cool. And it also hits uh, really hard too. Okay, so let's talk real quick about sub-ohm tanks. There weren't a lot of like stellar standout sub-ohm tanks this year, in my opinion. Honorable mention is gonna be that Horizon Tech Duos, that uh, rig mod tanker. One sub-ohm tank that I really did like this year was that Wake tank. I like it with the rebuildable, uh, you know, base. I like it as an RTA. I like it with the drop-in coil heads, and I really, really like it with the mouth-to-lung coil heads. This is something I have been vaping nonstop since I got these little got these little mouth to lung coil heads in here. This has been an ongoing thing in the vlog. I've been using two 18650s on a 1.5 ohm coil for basically 4 weeks now and still haven't run out the batteries. And I do, I know we do have clips for all of these, but sometimes I like to say it. I think we have a clip. Did take this on tour with me. I vaped it for 2 full weeks and it was Fantastic. And then when I got it home, I got some Wake Mod Co. coil heads for this. They're 0.5 ohm coils. They come in a little three pack like this. I've been vaping on the coil head ever since I got home. So about five days now. And it's been, it's been fantastic as well. The airflow isn't terribly smooth, it's smooth enough, it feels just a little bit turbulent, but this tank, like a lot of other tanks, it gives me that sensation of like breathing through a sponge. It's not wide open swooshy airflow, it feels like your airflow is moving past something or through something. I don't know why I get so caught up on this whole like breathing through a sponge thing. The airflow is Fine. It's a restricted, slightly turbulent lung hit. They are 100% compatible with each other, meaning if you buy the Wake RTA and it comes with the RTA deck in there, you can unscrew it and you can plug in a sub-ohm coil head. I would get the RTA and then just buy coil heads if I want them. I really like using the Wake tank as an RTA. It's easy to build, it's easy to wick, and it delivers stellar, stellar flavor. Additionally, I've been using it with these coil heads for the last few days, and while they don't deliver that same type of flavor that you would get from an RTA, they do deliver some really nice flavor. Another sub ohm tank I really loved this year that I don't have set up right now is that UL Valerian sub ohm tank. Holy crap, what a good sub ohm tank. The coil heads lasted me a good long time. It has one of, if not the simplest top filling systems I've ever seen in a tank. And like I said, I don't have anything set up right now. So I think we have a clip. What we're gonna be talking about today is this right here. This is the Valerian tank from UL. And it is, you guys, it is a stellar, stellar sub ohm tank. I get very decent flavor from this and it has nice, smooth, swoosh, airflow. I'm a big fan of this tank from top to bottom. It is uh, 25 millimeters in diameter. It's got a 5 mil capacity Pyrex glass tank, all full stainless steel construction, and it has the best top fill system. I mean, honestly,
honestly, that I've seen in a sub-ohm tank. It doesn't get any easier than pressing this button, having the top flip open and going bleh, and then closing it and just vaping away. Like I said, really smooth, swooshy airflow. It feels very, very nice. The Valerian vapes great on its own without the, the pins. The pins are, I don't, I don't care about them. I really like this tank a lot. I think this could be one of, if not the best sub ohm tank I've used this year. And if we're gonna talk about the flavor real fast, the flavor is good, but it's not amazing. It's not like some sort of, uh, you know, flavor tank. It's a sub ohm tank. It's meant for clouds, bro, clouds, and you will be able to taste your juice. This is an amazing sub-ohm tank. It is really easy to set up, really simple, really straightforward. You just fill it up and you will have a great vape experience with a very, very low, very, very low level of fiddling. And lastly, another sub-ohm tank that has not got a review just yet. This is gonna be the world's quickest review for this. This is the Fire Luke Mesh. I am in love with these coil heads. I think using mesh in a coil head as a heating element is the best thing in a coil coil head ever. I get such a nice, flavorful, dense, saturated vape. And best of all, I can use this 0.15 ohm coil head on a dual parallel unregulated, like I can run it on this Titan and it's a fantastic vape. The airflow on this tank isn't terribly smooth, but it is nice and swooshy. It feels good. I feel like I get a really nice, like I said, a really nice, dense, saturated vape. On the Fire Luke Mesh, I've never been afraid of dry hits. There's some sub ohm tanks out there where I feel like if I take too long of a drag, it's gonna get dry on me. I have never felt that way with the Fire Luke Mesh. I also wish it wasn't called the Fire Luke, but that, uh, you know, I can't really count that count that against it. It's just, uh, it's just a dumb name. Dumb name, but a great tank. Honestly, I don't even think this tank needs a review. Ready for the review of this tank? It's a sub ohm tank. There's a base you put your coil head in. It's a four mil capacity and it's got a very easy twist off the top, fill up your juice, screw back down the top and vape it sort of thing. This is one of the easiest sub ohm tanks to just set up and have a great vape. There you go. That's my full review for the Fire Luke Mesh. Okay, let's talk real quick about RTAs, Rebuildable Tank Atomizers. Now, I only actually have one of them set up right now, so we're gonna be jumping to a lot of clips. But the first one that I love that I gotta mention from Watofol, it's the Troll. It's the Troll RTA. I really liked it. I really liked the deck. I know a lot of people, some people had problems with that peak insulator in the middle, like it was actually melting. I dry burned my coils a lot on that RTA, and I never had had any issues with that peak insulator, man. I thought it was easy to build, I thought it was easy to wick, and I really like the vape I got from it. I don't have one set up, so let's go to a clip. This is the Troll RTA from Watofo. Spoiler alert, I've been having a pretty freaking amazing time with this tank. The fit and finish on it are just fantastic. The airflow, really nice, smooth, and swooshy. I get really nice flavor from it, really nice performance from it. This is a 0.19 ohm coil. I have it rocking at a very gentle sort of 66 watts. The airflow doesn't feel turbulent to me in any way, but it is a, a touch on the loud side, I guess. Yeah. Before I hyperventilate, yeah, it's a touch on the loud side. Otherwise, the vape experience I get from this tank is stellar. I mean, the flavor is on point. The airflow is nice. The flavor, the flavor, the flavor is so good. Another RTA that I really loved this year that I don't have set up yet again was the Kylin. Until I, I finally figured out the Kylin. I finally figured out using the juice flow control within the tank. I never really fiddled around with that before. I would close it off to fill it up and I would open it up to vape. And I realized that with the Kylin, you can adjust the juice flow and it stays where you put it. Meaning if you wicked it and you're getting, oh, it's, it's flooding, it's getting a little bit gurgly on 
me that sucks. You can just turn the juice flow down and get less juice flowing into the chamber and it cleans it right up. It makes the gurgle go away. It makes the flooding go away. Of all the RTAs I've tried, that is the easiest one to wick because it doesn't have to be that precise. You can adjust the juice going into it and I thought that was a really huge bonus. Plus, I really like the vape I got from the Kylan RTA and like I already said, I don't have one set up. So we're gonna go to a clip. This is the Kylan RTA. It's a lot like the Amit RTA, but I think it has much better, smoother airflow. It also has the options to go from a small little two mil tank to a much bigger, like five and a half mil tank. This is a 0.19. I've got it resting at a moderate 80 watts. It's giving me 4.4 volts. Awesome. This is a great vape, man. So many clouds, bro clouds so much good flavor. The Kylan is impressing the hell out of me right now. So when I was setting up this video, the one RTA that I really, really wanted to set up again, and it's just because, in my opinion, RTAs are the most fiddly way to vape. They're fiddlier than squonkers, they're fiddlier than drippers, they're fiddlier than sub-ohm tanks. They just require a little bit of extra attention, which is the reason why most of these of these RTAs are not, uh, you know, built and wicked, and I'm able to vape them right now. But one that I really, really wanted to set up again, that Reload. The Reload RTA is, in my opinion, out of all of these, and I know I said I wasn't going to rank any of these, but out of all the RTAs I talk about, I think the Reload RTA is legitimately the best RTA. The vape quality I get from this, unreal. It's flavorful. The airflow is smooth and swooshy. It's easy to build. It's easy to wick. It's easy to fill. And I absolutely love it. I love the size. I love the way it looks. I love the low profile design. It's just an all around really good RTA. It's also an all around really expensive RTA. That's a little bit difficult to get your hands on if you're after one. Unbelievable, unbelievable vape. That was such a good vape. But I think we also might have a clip for this one. And even though this one's already set up, I think we might have a quick clip. I love the Reload RDA. So chances were already pretty good that I was gonna enjoy the Reload RTA. And thankfully, yeah, dude, it's so good. It's a top fill juice system and the top has these like knurled nubbins on the top, big kidney shaped juice fill holes. It's kind of a slightly postless deck type of system. Very simple, very straightforward, nice easy deck to build on, and it is super easy to wick, you guys. No issues with leaking, no issues with gurgling, nothing but a very nice, dense, warm, saturated, very saturated feeling vape. Flavor on this is top notch. The fit and finish, the construction quality of this tank is great. It is just spectacular. Better materials, thicker walls, easier threads, nice fit and finish, O-rings on point, deck on point. It's great. Am I, am I gushing about it enough? God, what a good RTA. Another RTA that I really liked this year came from Synthetta Cloud, and it was the Flux RTA. And like all of my other RTAs, I don't have it set up right now. One of my favorite things about the Flux RTA was just how clean and simple it looked. The airflow on the bottom was very clean and minimal, and the tank itself was very cool and clean and minimal. It was easy to build. It was slightly fiddly to wick. Out of all the RTAs I'm talking about today, the, that one, this this one, that Flux RTA from Synthetic Cloud, was kind of the most difficult to wick. I may have just got lucky every time I wicked it, but every time I wicked it, it worked really well and wicked very nicely. It was a little flavor banger of an RTA, and like I said, I don't have it set up right now, but we do have a clip. What we're going to be talking about today is this guy right here. This is the new RTA from Synthetic Cloud. It's called the Flux. It wasn't really difficult to build, wasn't really super difficult difficult to wick. It was all very straightforward. One thing that I like really a lot about this tank is just the way it looks. I think it just looks super cool. It's just very, very clean. You have solid lines, clean lines when your tank is full. It just looks like a cool vaping device in my opinion. So far, flavor's quite nice. I kind of want to keep using this tank just because I think it looks so cool. As an RTA, it's a damn, damn good vape so far. These coils came out to 0.27. I've got 
got them sitting at 60 watts, like I said, on the Therion DNA 75C. Great. I mean, this is a very solid vape. The airflow is a little bit restricted. I'm wondering if I'm actually going to get used to that or if I'm constantly going to be wishing that there was more airflow. Very, very restricted lung hit. Still vapes nice. The flavor is even better that way, but I rock this full open. I'm kind of wishing there was some more airflow. Nah, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's one of those things I think about. The build quality that I've noticed so far, very nice. Top to bottom, very nice. And lastly, the honorable mention RTA goes to the Manta. I really, really enjoyed that Manta RTA. It wasn't anything new. It wasn't anything revolutionary. They didn't do anything in any new ways. It was just a really solid RTA to build to wick to use. I got great flavor from it and I think it looked pretty cool. And again, like a lot of other RTAs in this segment, I don't have it set up right now, but I do have a clip. This is the Manta RTA from Advokin. I've really been enjoying it. I think it's a banging little flavor RTA. It just looks very cool, very clean. I like the airflow. I don't like adjusting the airflow because it's honestly kind of a pain in the ass. Even when it's on your mod, it is stiff. The fit and finish of this RDA, very, very nice. All the threads are very smooth. It looks really cool. The deck is basically a velocity style deck. It's easy to build. It's easy to wick. You just pop your wicks down into the little chambers. You fill it up, you wet it down, you're good to go. It is a damn fine vape. I just have a simple fuse Clapton in here and the flavor that I'm getting, quite, quite delicious. I've had no leaking, no gurgling, nothing but delicious warm vapor into my mouth hole. So the Manta RTA isn't revolutionary, it's not game changing, it's not trying to reinvent the wheel, it's just a really good solid RTA. So yeah, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about some squonkers. Let's talk about some squonkers that I really enjoyed this year. Obviously, first out of the gate, one of the best squonkers of the year, the Pulse. The Pulse is great. The Pulse is an unbelievable squonker. It is a solid, solid squonker. It's obviously not the most like durable squonker that's out there. It's 100% plastic. I mean, if we're being real, the outside is plastic. The doors are plastic. And I'm not saying it's like a fragile squonker, but it's all made out of plastic. But with that said, it's a really good squonker. And I, why don't I have my Pulse set up right now? Oh, fuck everything. I thought I had my Pulse all going already. Ah, shit. Okay, uh, I thought I had my pulse set up. Really, I don't? Well, it's here, and the squonk bottle is full of juice, but I don't have a matching RDA. I don't remember what I was running on this, or even what even what juice is in here. Anyway, single 2700, single 18650. I thought this was a great, great squonker. And of course, I have a clip. Let me tell you guys, this vape, this vape is a rockin' vape. Feels very solid once there's batteries and the juice is, you know, the bottle is full of juice. It feels real nice in the hand. The doors on these mods hold on real well. They're held on by magnets. And there's also a little bit of pressure holding it on as well. Even alone, even just the Vandy Vape Tony B Pulse squonker box mod is a great box mod. Overall, this box mod is just great to use. It's just great to hold. This is the first, well, okay, maybe not the first. This is one of the few squonker box mods that I can use one-handed. I hold it like this. I got the trigger right here, and I got my squonk bottle right here, and it's literally a one-handed operation. It's a nice big opening here for the squonk bottle. I like it. I like using it. I like vaping it. It's a cool little all self-contained thing. And these new, you know, sort of clear plasticky color doors look very, very cool on this. The original Tony B Pulse Squonker box mod, you can find around the internet for about 30 bucks, maybe sometimes 35. I'm not gonna talk about squonkers without talking about the Drip Tech DS. This is probably, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna say that this is my favorite squonker, but this was a squonker that I truly, truly fell in love with because it was the first squonker that really catered to the way that I like to vape. I like big airflow, I like hot builds, I like clouds bro clouds, and the Drip Tech DS delivers in spades. Dual parallel and triple parallel configurations, you could run a point 09 dual coil cloud chasing build on here and still have a great squonking vape experience. Hits 
nice and hard because of that dual parallel configuration. Now I'm not sure what's going on with these mods. Some people are telling me that they're discontinued. Some people are telling me that 528 isn't selling them anymore. Someone is telling me that they aren't discontinued, that someone else is going to be selling them. I truly and honestly have zero idea. This one came from 528 Custom Vapes, but I don't know where they're being sold now, and I don't know if they're discontinued. If they're discontinued, that would be a huge shame because this is a stellar squonker. And I don't have a lot of squonkers in this list so far because there wasn't a lot of squonkers that really impressed me this year. China seemed to be cranking out a lot of like really very minimalistic squonkers, like just a little plastic box that you just has two contacts, you just put a battery in and then there's a juice bottle and China's like, there you go, there's a squonker. And it wasn't really anything cool. They weren't really anything fun or neat. There was that Druga one that I really didn't like. There was a few from Watofo that I was like, yeah, they're squonkers, but... Yeah, I don't care. They're they're not that cool, right? What I'm really excited about in 2018 is to get some really spectacular squonkers. I think uh, there's, there's going to be some really nice squonkers in 2018. I think the technology is kind of finally catching up. I think people are figuring out how to make better squonkers other than having just a little plastic box or like a little 3D printed plastic box with a single battery and a little juice bottle in there. I think squonkers need to move overall past that little aesthetic. And the last Squonker, rounding out my favorite Squonker is going to be no surprises. This is the Luna. The Luna from Asmodis. It's a stabilized wood and acrylic single 18650 Squonker that I have absolutely fallen in love with. It's got this great comfortable button placement right here that I was really sketchy about at first. I feel like my regular viewers right now just feel like they're watching a rerun because I've talked about this so much in the vlog, but it is a fantastic vape and it really opened my eyes to squonking as far as like, well, maybe Maybe I don't need like a .09 dual coil like cloud chasing squonk. Maybe I can have like a little bit more of a relaxed single 18650 mellow squonk. And even though I do have this one set up, I still go to a clip. I have, I have fallen in love with this little bitty squonker. This is the Luna Squonker from Asmodis, single 18650, stab wood acrylic, little squonky bottle here guy. And best of all, it's not incredibly, terribly, insanely expensive. Button's not on the front and it's not on the back, but it's on the side. And when I first opened this package, my first thought was, wow, that is a really weird button placement, right? It's just something I'm not used to, but I found it to be insanely comfortable to use. The size of this mod, oh, it's so great. It fits perfectly in my hand. These single 18650 squonkers, I was using them wrong. It's not a clouds bro clouds type of vape. It's a chill, flavorful vape. This one's only a hundred dollars. Let's just do this thing. If we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have, is the Luna Squonker from Asmodis something I would seek out and buy? Absolutely, yes, without hesitation. This has been one of the best squonking experiences that I have ever had. So yeah, let's uh, let's wind this down. Let's wrap this little best of, or not best, I'm not gonna say best of 2017. None of these are the best. I feel like the best is really too hard to judge. And saying something is the best is, is far too much power and responsibility for one person to have. These are just my favorite things. I, I can't stress that enough, especially, especially when it comes to juice. Not everybody uh, has my same palate, I guess. Not everybody likes the same flavors that I like. I like some pretty weird flavors, man. One of those weird flavors is that Fall Delight, the Sage Nicotine Salt 6 milligram Fall Delight. I can lung this and it's delicious. It doesn't make me cough like other salt nicks or other higher nicotine salt nicks juices. It's a sweet, strong, rich tobacco flavor, and I'm almost out of it, but I love it. I love this Fall Delight juice. I, I have to get more of this. And even though this is my favorites of 2017, I'm not going to include any of the juices that I've been vaping for years and years, or I'm not going to include any of my own juices. Like, yeah, I've been vaping Yig a lot this year. I've been vaping Glacier Banana a lot this year, but those aren't new juices. Those aren't juices that I tried first in 2017. And that's really
really more what I'm going for. This is my first experience with this juice that I really loved in 2017. I've had all of my juices for years and I continue to vape them, but these are new juices. And we're not gonna get very far if we don't talk about Turkish Maze. Turkish Maze was one of the biggest surprises of juice that I've ever had this year. When Turk was telling me about it and he's like, oh no, it's like a sweet, it's like a, it's like a butterscotch sweet, it's kind of like cornbread. I was like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, that I'll give it a shot. And damn it, Kent almost ruined me on Turkish Maze because he was vaping. He's like, oh, here, you wanna try Turkish Maze? And I was like, yeah, so I tasted it and he had been dripping it over Dynamite Fuse, which is like a sweet, a really sweet candy, sort of strawberry apple peach flavor. And so I was getting this like butterscotch cornbread, strawberry apple peach, and I was like, what is, why are you doing that? Why are you vaping that? And it wasn't until I finally got home because I'm a little bit of a flavor purist and I hate dripping other juices on top of other juices. I always like to freshly re-wick stuff when I'm trying a new juice, which is why when I do the random juice tastings in every vlog, it's a freshly wicked atomizer. And it wasn't until I got home and had that freshly wicked atomizer experience with the Turkish maize that I really fell in love with the Turkish maize. It's what's in this Drip Tech DS, it's what's in this Rebel, it's what's in this Ruby build, and it's, it's a great juice. It's a great juice. Great, it's, it's just a great juice. Another juice that I really loved this year that people are really torn on. People have told me that they've bought this juice and it's their new favorite thing ever, and then people reprimand me. They tell me they bought this juice and they hate it and it's horrible and they had to throw it away because it was unvapable to them. Poet, sweet black tea. I love this juice. I can't get enough of this juice. When I was building this reload RTA today, I thought, nope, the, I'm gonna put sweet black tea in there because that is a banging juice and I want to taste it. I want to taste the flavor from this reload RTA. Sweet black tea from Poet, absolutely love it. In fact, if we're gonna backtrack a little bit, this little Alpha, this Vupu Alpha, could be in my honorable mentions. It is one of the most uncomfortable mods to hold if you grip it, but if you give it a little bit more of a delicate touch, it's actually pretty comfortable in the hand. Plus, I think it just looks very, very cool. It's got that Vupu Gene chip in there, which is a great chip. It adjusts in one watt increments. Yes, thank you, Vupu. And like the Revenant, this Vupu Alpha has kind of become that like, oh, I got a new tank, I'll put it on the Alpha. Got a new RDA, I'll try it out on the Alpha. Just a reliable device. So flashback, honorable mention to that from the mods. Oh, that sweet black tea in this reload RTA, so, so great. So great. And there were two lemonade flavors this year that I also completely fell in love with. One of them being the Anarchist Pink Lemonade. It, it's just awesome. It could have, it could be, and I can't believe I don't have it set up right now, but the Anarchist Pink Lemonade could be like my favorite juice of the year. It's, it's just delicious. And a close second to that pink lemonade flavor is from Bonsai Vapors, Pink Paradise. I probably vaped through, I don't know, 120 mils of that juice this summer. It was like my go-to favorite Pink Paradise. I need it. Pink Paradise, Pink Paradise. I need it. I just loved it. I just love that juice. And then lastly, my last favorite juice of the year comes from Vigilante Juice Co. And I know this isn't a new juice. Vigilante Juice has been around for a while, but they did also kind of disappear for a number of years. The last time I had Vigilante Rogue, was back in 2014. And then in 2017, Vigilante came back and re-released Rogue, and it is just as good as I remember. I think it's actually better than I remember. It's like a vanilla custard with caramel and coconut, and it's just banging. And it tastes beautiful in this Faro mini tank. I really wish I had set this Faro mini tank up sooner. I think that's my biggest regret of 2017 so far. God, what a good juice. Just a wonderful juice. And one thing uh, that's not gonna be a huge category this year is gonna be uh, like mouth to lung vapes, like maybe a mouth to lung pod system kind of uh, my favorite things. And I can't mention the Mi One, even though the Mi One is hands down my favorite mouth to lung. It did come out in 2016 and I think I reviewed it in 2016 as well. But I love the Mi One. They also came out with the Mi Pod, which I absolutely love. This is loaded up with 18 milligram Glacier Banana 
this is one of, if not, I don't know, I haven't tried a lot, but this is my favorite so far of a refillable pod system. It's not terribly difficult to fill. I can fill it with like a glass dripper bottle if I really have to. And the vape I get from it is great. And it's just this tiny little dinky little thing that's great. It's not gonna win any cloud comps, but it does give me a very nice throat hit and it does give me very nice flavor. And another pod system I really loved using this year that I'm actually not sure if it came out in 2017. Ah, okay, it doesn't matter. It's whatever. The Fix. I love the Fix. I love the Brewwell Fix. I don't have it right now because my much lovelier better half, she has taken it from me and she is not here right now. But Fix, they came out with those infusion pods, which is like a menthol, uh, melon sort of flavor. Amazing. I've never had any issues with the Fix ever. It's never leaked. It's never been gurgly. It's just always been a really great pod system. If we're going to talk about mouth to lung, we have to mention the K-Fun, the K-Fun Prime, which I don't, again, it's getting cleaned. It's in the bathroom right now. I simply didn't have time to set it up for this video, but the K-Fun Prime, banging, banging mouth to lung vape. And in fact, I think we have a clip. This is the K-Fun Prime. And yeah, the K-Fun Prime is expensive. It's $120. God, it's such a good, flavorful mouth-to-lung tank. Now, if you are a die-hard K-Fun fan, you are not going to do any better than the K-Fun Prime. It is the newest and most best version of the K-Fun tanks. The construction, the fit and finish, top to bottom, it's a flawlessly designed and put together tank. Easy to use, easy to build, easy to wick, easy to adjust the airflow, easy to control the juice flow, easy to fill. I have very little gripes with this RDA other than the price. And don't get me wrong, this is a basically flawless tank that I believe is worth the price that is just an expensive price. But make no mistakes about it, the mouth-to-lung vape that you get from the K-Fun series of tanks, and especially the K-Fun Prime, is awesome. It's just a great mouth to lung and the flavor cannot be touched. The flavor of a K-Fun cannot be touched. I stand by that statement unflinchingly. But yeah, the K-Fun Prime, banging, banging good mouth to lung tank. And another really good mouth to lung product that came out this year that I'm still testing. I'm still kind of putting it through its paces, but it's showing itself to be a very great tank is that new Inokin Eris that P. Bissardo and Dimitri designed. Got a really simple deck to build on. It's got a really foolproof wicking and it just goes together and feels very nice. And I get a really great, great mouth to lung vape from that Inakin Eris from uh, P. Bissardo and Dimitri. And I feel dumb because I don't even have a clip for it. I don't even have it set up right now. It's getting cleaned right now. But I didn't want to talk about mouth to lung without also mentioning that Inakin Eris tank. And, what, and one of the things I'm really also looking forward to in 2018, more mouth to lung stuff. More good mouth to lung stuff. The industry for the last few years has been like clouds, bro, clouds clouds bro clouds we've been perfecting this technology we've been getting bigger clouds and bigger tanks with bigger airflow and better juice wicking and bigger decks and clouds bro clouds everywhere and don't get me wrong i love me some clouds bro clouds but what i'm also really excited about for 2018 is much more mouth to lung stuff because i don't necessarily always want to carry like a cloud chasing mech setup when i go to target or when i go out to dinner we walk a lot of places. So if I'm walking to dinner, I don't necessarily want to carry around like a big mod with a big tank. I'd much rather grab just like this little meat pod, keep it in my pocket, take it to dinner, set it on the table. It's inconspicuous. It's not like a big fucking tank and giant thing. And inevitably what always happens, this is the reason why I love little mouth to lung bangers, little tiny mods. What inevitably happens every time I go into a restaurant and I'm like, oh, I brought my Titan with me and I put it on the, you know, I set it down on the table. The waitress will always go, the waiter or waitress or server will always go, oh, you know, you can't vape that in here. And I go, oh yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just setting it there because I don't want it in my pocket. With this tiny little thing, I can set it down there. No one even notices. Nine times out of 10, I can even just leave it in my pocket and avoid the whole interaction with the waitress or waiter altogether. So mouth to lung is what I'm really excited about for 2018. I think, uh, I think that's all I got. I think that's all I got for, uh, you know, my favorite vape gear of 2017. Again, none of this is necessarily the best 
vape gear. It's just stuff that I use that I really very much enjoyed. Of course, what I'm gonna try to do is put links in the description to everything that I talked about. A lot of my descriptions, especially in the vlog, have been getting far too long because I try to include too much stuff. And YouTube goes, oh, nope, you've somehow typed way too much down here. YouTube gives you a huge buffer. They give you like 5,000 characters to type. And somehow in every vlog, I managed to fill that up. So I'm gonna do my best to put links to everything that I talked about in this video down in the description. And I think that's really all I have to talk about. I'm not sure if I wanted to talk about vape meets or the tour or anything like that. I loved the tour. That was my favorite vape, you know, experience this year was going on tour. I also had a phenomenal time at ECC despite getting yelled at there. Not by the ECC staff, but by the convention center staff. And we all plan on going back to ECC in February this year. It's become uh, one of those staple things that I go to. It's just one of my favorite events. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Just my favorite stuff from 2017. I would love, absolutely love to get your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Was there some stuff that you loved that didn't make the list? Was there some stuff in my list that maybe you've never tried that you might want to now? I think that would be really interesting. Maybe we'll talk about those comments in the next full vlog that I do. But there you go. That's what I got, everybody. This is the last video of 2017, so I want to say thank you, thank you, my most sincere thank you to all of my subscribers and supporters that have supported me and viewed my videos over the last eight years. I've uploaded over a thousand videos, and that is just insanity. But I really, really appreciate the support from everybody. Again, I'll have links to everything down in the description, including where you can check out my Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon pages if you are so interested. Anyway, that's it. We're done with 2017, everybody. We'll see you in the new year. And as always, ooh, what am I going to grab? What's going to be my last video vape of 2017? Segeli Fuchai Glow, Faro Mini RTA, DHD cap on top, and Vigilante Rogue on the inside. I am very satisfied with this being my last on video vape of 2017. Anyway, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you again so much for watching. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping.